this is where things start getting interesting. So here are all the entities that it detected. So the first one was the text Amazon. In fact, let me bring up the raw text right here. So Amazon, it detected as an organization with a 99% accuracy. Or these scores are out of one. So it seems pretty confident of that. Elastic Cash, it guesses at 66% uh, score that this is a commercial item. AWS is an organization. Graviton2 is a commercial item, right? Uh, there are some other very interesting ones. So Paris is a location, because this announcement says that this was launched in Paris and Milan. I think there's Milan in here somewhere as well. Europe is a location. Um, these different instance types, um, R6GD, that's other, it doesn't know how to classify that. Then you got dates like August 4th, 2022, which is the date of this blog post. You'll see this right up here on top. Um, so it does a pretty neat job of identifying all the key entities. Now, let's say you wanted to create an index of all of your documents so that it's searchable. Just figuring out what these key elements are, you can take all of this and cr start creating good, neat indexes out of this. That would make searching all this content a lot easier. Now, here's another very interesting feature. If you wanted the searching to be a little more interesting, you can start using a new or another API called detect key phrases. So instead of just looking for words uh, or single entities, you can start looking for key phrases. Because sometimes you want natural language-based querying. You want to look for these phrases. Um, so let's just try that out. Let's see what we get. This time when we run this with key phrases, you'll see that you've got long sentences like the Graviton 2 based T4G, M6G, R6G, and R6GD instances. Or if you go up a little further, it says the general purpose M6G, or it figures out that this is some quantity and that's relevant. NVMe based SSD storage is another key phrase that you might want to search for. It's not just storage. It's not just SSD. It's not just an M NVMe. The fact that it's NVMe-based SSD storage is important for good uh, natural searches. So provides a pretty neat way of you know collecting all this information without you having to write much code at all. I mean, this is what? This effectively is one line of code. Yeah, it looks like four because I... Yeah, you're just you know, wrapping... So you're wrapping one, line line for there, one line for Boto, one line for this. Like five, six lines in total. And I didn't really have to do very much to do to get all of this. And it probably cost me, you know, a fraction of a fraction of a cent. To, I remember getting through all this data science and machine learning, you know, lectures and learning about TF, IDF and, you know, learning about the n-grams and the bigrams and building up indexes and manually labeling all this stuff. And even if you went through all that work and did all of that, it wouldn't be nearly as good as this because it's been trained on so much data. Exactly. Last, I am going to try this one. And we were, I was writing this up just as you we were starting this episode. I wanted to really understand how well it does on sentiment. Okay. Um, so I pulled up this Top Gun Maverick review that someone had posted and uh, brought it into the code. And so actually let's copy, let's copy this and replace this raw text with that. Okay, I'd be really interested to see what it does on the entities. Again, live coding. I don't know if this will work. The test for the comprehend team. Let's see. Let's see. How well it does on detecting the entities. Okay, let's yeah. see what entities it found. It found Top Gun. It found Maverick. That's that's the title. Then tonight is a date. Tony Scott is a person. 80s is also a date. And that's pretty neat. The neat thing about that is that it's not just looking at you know syntax, but it's looking at the way what, what do you call it? It's it's looking at the embedding. So it's saying way back in the 80s or you know back in the 80s and that embedding like you wouldn't it's not just looking for number number s right this is, this is not regex this is 
embedding and context and how these particular phrases fit in and how they're used in the language. Correct. One of the best, this one is interesting. One of the best is a quantity. I think this one, movies, I don't know in what context, or maybe one of the best movies. This one seems off. Tom Cruise is a person. Cruise is a person. Let's see, any other interesting ones here? Well, and there's, again, if you you were talking about a cruise ship, it wouldn't be, it would figure that out based on the context. Correct. He's talking about Mr. Cruise or Cruise did a great job where cruise ship wouldn't make sense, even though it's the same word. Exactly. Okay, let's try out uh, key phrases. What it produces for key phrases. By the way, a shout out to the Dev Spaces team. As you can see, I'm doing this all live in a browser. Okay. This Dev Spaces makes it so easy to go straight from code without having to set up the environment. The environment is all provided as infrastructure as code. So, and by the way, the, if you don't provide it, the default image that it uses has support for 25 languages right out of the box. So you really don't need to do very much. You can get started right, right away and uh, start playing around with code. And all you okay. need is, is a GitHub ID. I put the, a banner up showing uh, where to try it out. Literally, you just you don't have to sign up with us. You just put in your GitHub ID and authenticate that. And right away, you can just use Dev Spaces on a Graviton 3. It's a hell of a lot easier than SSHing into a box and getting it all set up and remembering to yeah. close it down. It's just right there, ready to go. I, I love this product. Correct. And you close the browser. It's ephemeral, so it goes away. So literally for every PR, for every commit that you want to look up, you can create a completely separate environment, run it up for the 10, 15, 20 minutes that you're going to play around with it, and then just kill it, or it'll die automatically. So it's really, really simple. Okay, let's come back to comprehend. So look at the key phrases. These are actually pretty neat. Um, 80s people is the key phrase. It wasn't just 80s the time, but it was the 80s people. Everything else, uh, friendship, loyalty, romance, and okay. Uh, old school action movie, playful winks and embellishments, absolute best, supporting cast. It's pretty neat. Um, original Top Gun leather jacket. That's, That's really cool. <laughs> okay, now for the hard one, to be able to figure out sentiment, okay? Let's, I'm going to do line by line sentiment over here because I want to really understand whether it's able to provide that level of detail. So let's go ahead and do this. Hey. Oh, I dumped everything, sorry. <laughs> I dumped everything in one, but we can turn this into a line by line one. Okay, so this was everything and it's, 94% positive or a score of 0.94. Um, so yeah, very high confidence that this is a great positive review for the movie. And it was that simple. Can you imagine doing this for your internal documents, your blog, or to figure out sentiment of all of your employees or the communication that they're having, uh, or to give feedback to someone, you know, when you're sending out, you know, communication internally, you want to make sure that that communication is neutral or positive and you're not, you know, you're not communicating negatively because that's not productive. Imagine this being a filter to your email before you send it out. Like, it's interesting. Some people don't recognize that their tone um, can be misperceived. And it's correct. So being able to say, okay, before I send this email, oh, this is, this is being read as more negative than I intended. When it should be neutral, right? That it's really neat to be able to get that feedback from a essentially objective source. Yeah, one concrete data point I do have is that Comprehend does not understand sarcasm yet. <laughs> well, you know, most many people don't, so <laughs> that's I think, true. Uh, too. I think that's a pretty high bar. Yeah, agree. That that's some of the most complicated um, things that are out there. Correct. Well. Uh, here, I'll share my screen real quick. I know we've got about five minutes. 
Uh, I wanted to share along the custom entity part. So what I did um, to train a custom named entity is I, I looked at video game names. So just to show the, the path of how this works, uh, the steps are basically this. First, you want to upload some training data to S3. Then you can annotate that data using SageMaker Ground Truth. And then you train the model. And then you can test the model. And then you can run it in an endpoint. So to show what that looks like, uh, I'll start with, with Comprehend. So let me open up a new tab here. So if I go to Comprehend, oops, sorry, Custom Entity Recognition. Go back. Oh, OK, I see. I have this one set up for real-time analysis. So this is going to use my model. Uh, I'll show you how this, got, this model got set up. Let's go to the training data. 